Chapter 6, Trigonometric Functions, and today we're going to do some Grade 11 review to get you started. Um, today it just happens to be the Thursday before Thanksgiving long weekend, so once I get this up for you, hopefully that'll give you something to work on over the long weekend, and um, I'll try to get ahead of you as soon as I can. So the first thing we need to talk about is um, what is sine, cos, tan, what are all these things? Um, this section on trigonometry is probably the, the hardest two chapters in your grade 12 course. So hunker down. Um, I promise you I'll make it as easy as possible. But you, if you're having some difficulties with this grade 11 review, you can go back to the grade 11 functions course and take a look at some of the videos there if there's something specific that you need to focus on. So I'm going to run over this fairly quickly. First of all, we're going to talk about a unit circle. And some students who will, what's a unit circle? All that means is that the radius will be considered to be one unit. So the radius is one. That makes things a little easier for us to describe the different trigonometric ratios and also to, uh, to figure out exact values. So the first thing we want to talk about is um, how do we get sine, cos, and tan? So in here we have theta. Here's our angle. An angle is always measured from the x-axis to, do you remember this? This was called the terminal arm. So you have an initial arm that would be on this axis. So let's, let's write a few things on here. So this is initial arm. I don't want to get it too messy though. This one here would be called the terminal arm. Terminal arm. And however far you swing this terminal arm around, that's called the principal angle. So if I ended up over here, for instance, my principal angle would swing all the way to here. So you have a principal angle, and then you have a related acute angle, which I'm going to talk about some more in just a minute. So those are things you need to know. Principal angle, terminal arm, initial arm, um, and the related acute angle. So when I measure an angle from the x-axis, remember it's always from the x-axis, up or down. And we set up our right angle triangle here to the terminal arm, and then we can figure out the different ratios. So now you probably remember the good old SOHCAHTOA. And this was all part of what we called primary trig ratios. So um, I'm just going to write SOHCAHTOA here. Um, that's probably something that you've memorized very well. And we have sine. And sine is always of an angle. Don't say sine equals. It has to be sine theta, beta, whatever you want to call the angle. Alpha, sine b, sine c, whatever. It has to have an angle with it. Sine is nothing on its own. So the sine of theta is considered to be, and this was by convention, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the first thing I would teach my grade 10 class when they're learning trig is how to label the sides. We know the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So that's our H. The opposite side is this side over here. And this would be adjacent. Now, I tell my students sometimes when they're doing um, word problems, they can't remember. I was, you have to label them because sometimes the angles, you know, like you'll have something upside down like this or something. And, and you don't know, I mean, you know, this hypotenuse and you want to label the other sides. The trick is to put your finger on the angle like this, and it should say, aha. See the A and the H, aha. Uh -huh. If it says, oh ho, oh no, you're wrong. And this is kind of basic stuff, but it will help you. And some people just say, well, it's opposite because it's opposite the angle. This one's adjacent. Adjacent means beside. So the sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. We also gave it some letters in terms of X, Y, and R. So this length here, you know, from here to here would be X, right? That's X. The height here would be y, and r becomes your radius. That's your radius, right? So x, y, and r. So sine theta can also be considered or called or labeled y, so opposite over hypotenuse. So it's y over r. Now you did this in grade 11, and then you kind of forgot about it or didn't use it as much. You just needed to know the ratios but it becomes important for some other calculations. 
Okay, so the cos of theta, CAH adjacent hypotenuse. So it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And again, if you look at the unit circle, that would be X over R. X over R and the tan of theta, you know, is O, A, opposite, adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, that's Y over X. Okay, so those are your primary trig ratios, and that gives you the, um, the other way of writing them in terms of opposite and hypotenuse using X, Y, and R from the unit circle. Okay, now we also had reciprocal trigonometric ratios, and let me get this out of here. It was just kind of a quick thought. Okay, so reciprocal, trig reciprocal trigonometric, it's hard to say that, reciprocal trigonometric ratios, those are one over. So the reciprocal of sine, now this is where students get mixed up, sine goes to cosecant theta. I told my students that probably someone just made a mistake because you would think cos, cosecant. No, no, no. Sine, cosecant, theta. That would be R over Y. So you're just reversing these. Cos goes to secant theta, which is R over X. And tan goes to cotan theta, which is X over Y. So that gets those basic understanding of trig trigonometric ratios out of the way. So... The other thing that you learned really well in grade 11 was called the cast rule. I'm sure you remember that. Now, everyone has a different way of labeling these. Some say all students take calculus. Some people just say cast. And the problem is sometimes people don't remember which letter goes where. So we're going to put them in nice bright letters here for you. This is going to be my A, S, T, and C. So we have cast. All students take calculus. What does that mean? It means that in every 360 degrees, there are going to be two places where your trigonom trigonometric ratio will be positive. So everything is positive in this quadrant. Why is that true? Because in this quadrant, all of the X's are positive and all of the Y's are positive. So that means it would be like this, right? X and Y both positive in this quadrant. If I was in this quadrant, my X's would be negative, but my Y's would be positive. So I would say negative, positive. In this quadrant, everything is negative. The X's are negative. The y's are negative. Any point in here, right, would be like negative 2, negative 2. And in this quadrant here, I have my x's positive, but my y's are negative. So if you look at the signs of the x's and y's in these quadrants, and you refer back to how the x, y, r are related to the sine, cos, and tan, you would see that as long as y is positive, now remember r is always going to be positive, because it has a positive length of one, right? We have one, 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 one. That's why they call it the unit circle. Okay, so if, if R is always one, then the sine of theta is determined by the Y value, which means Y is positive here, so everything is positive. Y is positive here, and that's the Y for sine theta. Sine theta is Y over R, so if it's y over r, then this is where sine is positive, okay? If I'm in this quadrant, both are negative. So if x is and y are negative, this would be a negative in this quadrant, negative here. But if both are negative, negative over negative, that would make it positive. So tan is positive in this quadrant. And finally, Cosine is positive here because the x's are positive. Remember, it's x over r, and r is always positive. So that gave you the cast rule. So what happens now is if I give you an angle anywhere between 0 and 360, now this is limited, right? I have to give you a domain because, as you know, the sine, cosine, tangent functions don't stop going, right? So I have to say between 0 and 360 degrees, because that's one cycle of the cosine or sine function I've drawn you here. It's a sine function. 
there are going to be two places that would be here and here if I was measuring the related acute angles. So I'm going to have two quadrants where it's positive, two quadrants where it's negative. And it just so happens that those are these two where sine is positive and these two where sine is negative. See, it's under here. If I was to draw you the cosine function, which you know starts like this, so for 360 degrees, each of these can be divided into quadrants or the quarters of my unit circle. And you can see that cos would be positive, then negative, then negative, then positive, right? Positive, negative, negative, positive. So that's why we have the unit circle. Um, and we need to be able to figure out what the related um, acute angles are. We'll talk about that again, like I said, in a second. So now, just going on to talking about using your calculator, because you do use your calculator a lot for trigonometric um, figuring out values. Back in the day when I went to school, we didn't have calculators. Yes, I am that old that we didn't even have a calculator. We had trigonometric tables. So back in those days, you had to look up a value for the ratio of the sides and find the angle from a chart. So basically, that's what's going on inside your calculator. If you pull up your calculator and I say, I want to know if the ratio of the sides, the opposite to the adjacent, is negative 1.234, what is the value of theta? So you get out your calculator and you do second function tan negative what was it? 1.234. Nice number there. And I get negative 51 degrees, about 50.9. Okay, so theta is approximately equal to negative 51 degrees. Now, most often your teacher is going to say where theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. So what's a negative angle? Well, this would not be an answer that your teacher would want you to give if she said, what is theta if tan theta is negative 1.234? You would have to say, okay, well, I'm going to make a little sketch, which is always a really good idea. Now, remember, positive angles go this way and negative angles go this way, right? So if I'm at negative 51 degrees, so... I'm going this way, negative 51 degrees. That's theta in here. But I don't want, I don't want to know what theta, I, I don't want theta to be negative. So that means that my theta had to be this angle. That's one of the solutions where tan is negative. And the other one I'd have to say, well, where else is tan negative? So it's positive here, but it's negative here. So that means there's going to be another angle that is here. Okay, so I get two angles for every 360 degrees. There will be two places where your trigonometric ratio is either positive or negative. So I need to figure out what this angle is here. So this angle here, minus 51, this is 51 degrees in here. So opposite angles, this is also 51 degrees here right? So how far is it from here to here? Well, it's 180 to this axis. So theta is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 51. That's going to be one of the solutions. And that comes out to 129 degrees approximately. And the other angle, this one that goes all the way around to here, is going to be 360 degrees minus 51. So that's going to be, or theta is approximately equal to 309 degrees. So all the way around here, all the way to here. Now I often show my students this little graph. When you have um, an angle, so let's, let's put some, say these were all terminal arms. The distance from the x-axis up or down Remember these angles here. Think of it like little bird wings flapping up and down. These are your related acute angles, right? 
measured from the x-axis from the x-axis to the terminal arm measured from x-axis to terminal arm that is your related acute related acute and you have to find those all the time okay so remember this little drawing it's just like these little bird wings going up and down from the x-axis it's very important okay so that's how you would find tan now let's do let's do another one just for for old time's sake here let's say i asked you what is the cos the cos of theta is equal to negative 0 0.2345 let's pick a number okay so i want to find theta remember again that to find an angle you have to do shift so i do this is actually the calculation you're doing cos negative 1 of minus 0 0.2345 is equal to theta right the inverse of this will give me the angle so i plug that into my calculator so i do second cos negative 0 0.2345 and I get 103.5 degrees, 103.6. So theta is approximately equal to 103.6 degrees. Okay, so first of all, let's make a little sketch. 103 degrees, that puts me in this quadrant here, right? 103. And I need to know where else is cos negative. So cos is positive here. Cos is positive here, cos is negative, negative. So I want to be in these two quadrants, S and T, where cos is negative. So what I want to know is what is the related acute angle? How far is it from here to there? So from the x-axis to the terminal arm. So if this is 103.6 degrees, how far is it from, I think I just lost my power here, Oh, back on. I live out in the country, so sometimes these things happen. Okay, so 103.6, what is this angle here then? So I want to know this is 180 degrees minus 103.6 degrees, and that's going to give me, what's that, 76.4? I think 76.4 degrees. 76. Oh, I better check it on my calculator because I'm really tired today. 180 minus 103.6 I think math teacher should be able to oh, I'm right 76.4 okay so 76.4 degrees is my related acute angle and I want cos to be negative so that means I need to go the same distance this way of the related acute so 76.4 degrees this way to go all the way around to here now again this would the the note should say that theta is between 0 and 360 degrees and that's usually what you're asked for okay so you're asked if I'm between these two because like I said we could go on and on for a long time right because um, trigonometric ratios continue okay so I have one angle is um, 103.6 degrees what is the other one I need to add 103.6 uh, sorry, 180 plus 180 plus 76.4. That's 0.4615256. So those those are my two angles. And remember, you will always have two answers, 256.4 degrees. Okay, so that's where we're at if you want to find those two angles. So it's important that you can find both of them. Now... Um, the other thing that we've talked to students about before, like if, if you have a ratio uh, for sine and cosine, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, the ratios will always be less than one. So sine theta and cos theta are less than one but tan if I said opposite over adjacent so if I did this over this that would be less than one 
But what if I had something like this? So the opposite side is really long and the adjacent side is short. So tan theta can be, may be greater than one. And that's important for you to, to understand as well. Okay, so we've got that underway. Let's talk about something else. If I said to you, the point minus two five is a point on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. Okay, all those things are important to say. State the primary and reciprocal trig ratios and find the measure of the angle. So, always make a little sketch. It's very helpful. So I go minus two and five. Let's say it's right here. Minus two, five. And your terminal arm, so that's going to be ending like this. It doesn't have to stop there. It just says this point is on it. Okay, so if I want to know what the primary trig ratios are, I do know this length here and this one here, right? So this is this is minus two here, minus two, and this is five. So I have a height of five. And what you need to do then is find the length of the radius. This is not a unit circle, right? So it's minus two, five. What is this length? So you use your little r squared equals x squared plus y squared and you have x and you have y and that gives you 29 so r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29 but remember when you're doing math you've got to explain everything but the radius is greater than zero. You can't have a negative ra radius. You can have negative lengths on your axes, but you can't have a negative ra radius. So r is equal to the square root of 29. So now if I asked you what are the trigonometric ratios, you should be able to tell me that sine theta. So remember sine is y over r. So we have y. 5 over the square root of 29. And that's all you're asked to find, the primary trigonometric ratios. So um, it's a primary and reciprocal. So that means the cosecant of theta would be root 29 over 5, right? And the cos of theta, cos theta would be x over r. So what's x minus 2? over r, the radius is a root of 29. And you can see that cos is negative. That makes sense, right? The sine is positive because this is the s quadrant. Sine is positive, cos is negative, and the tan of theta, oh, I guess I could say what um, the secant theta would be. Whoops, sec theta equals root 29 over, well, it's just negative. It doesn't matter where you put that negative sign, right? And then the tan theta would be opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent here, we've got 5 over negative 2. So cotan would be minus 2 over 5. Cotan theta. Don't forget your theta. Okay, and then finally it says, um, what is the measure of the angle? So measure the angle. You can pick any one of these ratios that you've worked on here. Um, let's do tan because we have nice numbers. So tan theta equals 5 over negative 2. So the inverse of minus 5 over 2 is going to be theta. And if you do that on your calculator, you should get theta is approximately equal to minus 68 degrees. So um, if the tan of theta is minus 68 and we're in this quadrant here, we have to be, the theta has to be, is a measure from here around, right? So if we have tan theta is negative 68, so theta has to be 180 degrees minus 68 or 112 degrees. Because this is giving you the related acute angle here, right? That's what it's measured. This is negative 68 degrees. 
So negative 68, it's going to be 68 degrees here, which means I'm 180 minus 68 or 112 degrees. So that's probably one of those questions you did. Uh, you would have seen that in your grade 11 course. And again, you can look to my, my older course for some help there. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is special triangles. And special triangles are those triangles where your teacher is going to say, give the exact value, right? Anytime you see this word, exact value, you're not going to use your calculator. You have to use your head and you have to draw your special triangles. So some teachers like you to memorize it. I think I can't memorize stuff like that. I, I'm really good drawing things and more visual. So when we're talking about special triangles, we're talking about triangles that have 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. It's really important that you understand these and can draw them. So I can't emphasize enough that if you if you had trouble with this before, don't have trouble with it now. Draw these triangles until it's second nature to you. So there's two types of triangles we're going to deal with. One is the equilateral triangle. Not equilateral, but um, what do you call this one? Two sides the same. Isosceles. Isosceles triangle. And they have two side lengths that are the same. We're going to call them one and they're 45 degree angles here and here because this is a 90 degree angle here. So if this side length is one and this side length is one, what is this side length here? Well, you should know that's the square root of two because r squared equals one squared plus one squared. r squared is two, r is equal to the square root of two plus or minus, but raised is positive. Okay, we don't need to write all that. So one, one, square root two. That's your 45 degree triangle ratios. So now you can tell me what's the sine of 45 degrees. And you'd say sine is one over root two. And maybe your teacher said root two over two. Do you remember how to do that? That means you multiply top and bottom by the root of two. Some teachers don't like that in the denominator. I don't think it's a big deal. Okay, so what's the cos of 45 degrees? The same thing, right? Adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. One over root two or root two over two. And finally, the tan of 45 degrees is one over one, one. Okay, so that's the, 30, uh, the 45 degrees. Boom, that one. 30 and 60 come from an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to draw a big one so we can show you. Oh, that's not, it's not going to be equilateral, but we'll pretend that it is. Okay, all these sides are the very same length in another world. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so if this length is 2, and this length is 2, and this length is 2, and why did I pick 2? Because I'm going to cut this in 1 half because this is 60. And I want this one to be 30. So now I have my three angles, 60, 30, and a right angle triangle. I cut this one in half, so this becomes a length of one, right? Cut in half. And because it's an equilateral, you can just drop that perpendicular down like that, divide the angle in half, and the side in half, because it was equilateral. Okay, so I have one, two, and this side length would be um, two squared minus one squared, or the square root of three. So two, one, square root three, and now I've got everything here for me to find the sine of 30 degrees, the cos of 30 degrees, the tan of 30 degrees, hopefully. Uh, you know, like when you're done this lesson, you really should go and write these out and make sure that you've got them nailed because they're going to pop up again and again. Okay, so let's look. What's the sine of 30 degrees? have to be in this this ang this angle right here 30 so tan is opposite over hypotenuse so sine 30 is one half or 0.5 you probably will that's one that you're just going to get to know really well the cos of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 and the tan of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3 or root 3 over 3 or Okay, 
Now the sine of 60 degrees, now I'm here, that's root 3 over 2. And you might notice something as we write these out, that the sine and the cos, we're going to look at that a little more closely later on in, uh, I don't know if it's this chapter or the next one. Um, the cos of 60 degrees, Jason over hypotenuse, notice the cos of 60 is the sine of 30. And the tan of 60 is root 3. And those are your special triangles, and those are exact values. Very important that you understand this. Go draw them. It's going to be on your test for sure. Okay, so let's see what we can do with these special triangles by talking about finding the exact value. So let's say find the, find the exact value of the cos. Oops, I'm writing too fast. Ask the exact value of the cos of 120 degrees. The exact value. Always draw a little picture. Where is 120 degrees? Over here, right? There's 120. So, first of all, I want to sketch to find the quadrant I'm in. Q. I'm going to use Q for quadrant. So, this is quadrant 2. What is positive in that quadrant? So, now I use cast to determine the sign. So, is cos positive or negative in quadrant 2? Well, in this case, it's going to be negative, right? Because C, A, S, only sign, only sign positive. So my cos is going to be negative. And what is the related acute angle? So again, that's the distance from the x-axis. So I've got to start on the x-axis up to the terminal arm. How far is that? Well, if this is 120 and that's 180, this has to be 60 degrees. So let's say 60 degrees. And now I'm going to use special triangles. Okay. So let's say you didn't remember it. You're going to draw a quick picture. You're going to do an equilateral triangle that I've cut in half. The largest angle is 60. The half one is 30. The length was 2 on the hypotenuse. 1 here and this is the square root of 3. So what's the exact value of the cos of 120 degrees then? We said it had to be negative. So the cos of 120 is going to be the negative cos of 60 degrees because 60 degrees would be positive, right? So the cos of 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 1 half but it's going to be negative. And there's my solution. Okay, let's do one more just for old time's sake here. Help you remember. The sine of 315 degrees. Make a drawing. Okay, we're going to follow the outline here that I've given you. So sketch to find theta. 315. So this is 90, 180, 270, 315. Somewhere around here. There's 315. Use a cast rule to determine the sign. It's going to be negative. So this is going to be, have to be the negative sign of what's the related acute angle now. How far is it from here to here? So 15. So that has to be 45. So 360. 360 degrees minus 315 degrees equals 45 degrees. So the related acute angle is 45 degrees. So the sine of 315 is the same as the negative sine, not the sine of the negative angle, but the negative sine of 45 degrees. And you know what the sine of 45 degrees, we already, I'm not going to draw that one again for you. It's 1 over root 2 or negative root 2 over 2. And that's how you use your special triangles to find that. Okay, let's do one more. And this time I'm going to give you the secant. <laughs> so if I said the secant, um, the secant of theta, let's say I told you, the secant of theta is equal to minus 2 root 3 over 3. And I said to you, 
um, what's theta? And you'd say, oh my goodness, I don't recognize this. I don't know what this means. And you would say, okay, well, if it's an exact value, then let's talk about what the um, secant is the reciprocal of what? So it's reciprocal of the cos, right? So cos of theta would be minus 3 over 2 root 3. And in order for me to simplify this, I would have to get rid of the denominator. So am I doing this right? So I'm going to do root 3 times root 3 over root 3. And that's going to give me, that gives minus 3 over minus 3 root 3 over, what did I say, 2 over 6. Um, I don't know why I did that. Let's fix this up again. I'm sorry. I'm goofing around here. Okay, so this is the secant. So the secant, the cos is a reciprocal of the secant. I told you this is tough. 3 over minus 2 root 3. And I multiplied by root 3 over root 3. I know what I'm trying to do, but I don't know how to say it. I'm trying to go work backwards. So if this had been, if this had been like this before, say this had been rationalized. So this would be minus 3 over like this, right? Minus 2 over root 3. If I multiplied the top and bottom by root 3, that would give me minus 2 root 3 over 3, right? So you can see that this is what it was before it was rationalized. So this just gives me the cos would be root 3 over 2, only negative. Now that I've got you completely confused, like this. Now I'd say, okay, what is the angle? So because this was the secant, that's what makes it a little difficult to see. You need to flip it in order to get the, um, in order to get the, the reciprocal trigonometric ratio. So the secant of this is the same as the cos of this. So what I did was I got rid of this root three first by multiplying by root 3 over 3. So I'm kind of flipping back. Remember when I said if you have 1 over root 2, that's the same thing as root 2 over 2. So in order to go backwards from that, I had to multiply by root 2 over root 2, which would give me this. So same thing here. I multiplied by root 3 over root 3. That gave me minus 2 over root 3. Minus 2 root 3 over 3. And then I had to flip it to get the flip to get the uh, cosine. Okay, so now I have minus root three over two, and I need to know what um, what's the special triangles it has root three and two. And actually, it's this one root right here, root three and two. So if the cos of theta is negative root three over two, root three over two, that's adjacent over hypotenuse would mean that it came from 30 degrees. That's the related acute. So I know it's related to 30 degrees, but it's negative. So where is cos negative? So C-A-S-T, it has to be in one of these quadrants. And I said it had to be 30 degrees from here and from here. So how far is it from here to here? That would be 180 minus 30. And so it was negative, right? So we've got from here to here, cos is negative, C, A, S, and T. I'm in this quadrant. So this is 30 degrees here. I said 30. So from here to here is 150 degrees. And from here around to here 
is 210 degrees. So if I put this into my calculator, I wouldn't get, I'm not going to get this exact value, but I could double check it. So let's say I want to know for sure what is the cos of 150 degrees, and I get negative 0 0.8660. So cos, this is just a little check, okay? Negative 0 0.8660. And what is negative root 3 over 2? So if I did second, it's sort of hard to see these, root 3 divided by 2, I would get 1.22. And then I need to do second cos of that. Second answer. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Mm. Let's try that again. Okay, so 150 degrees, the cos of 150 is 0 0.8660. So minus root 3 over 2. Second square root, oh my goodness, I can't see tonight, square root, square root 3, divided by 2 is 0 0.8660, the last time I forgot the bracket. Okay, so that works for this one and this one. And double check, C, A, S, T, I'm in the right quadrants, I'm 30 degrees away from this one, and from this one. So back up 30 degrees and add 30. So it's 180 minus 30, 180 plus 30, and those are your two answers. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. And good luck with this. Go back, do some review. You might even, like I said, want to check some of the trig from grade 11.